Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining and welcome to the Privacy by Design Principles Breakout Session of the International Data Transfers and Compliance Summit. My name is Seth Litwack, Council Global Privacy at the Interpublic Group, a global advertising holding company. Today, we will be discussing Privacy by Design, an important subject um, that, that really resonates uh, throughout the privacy world and, and can be found in, in the, the GDPR and various regulations throughout the world. Um, it's important because if you do privacy by design right, you do privacy right. We will now hear more about privacy by design from Katrina Destre, Director of Privacy at Kuma LLC USA, who will discuss how to operationalize privacy by design principles when designing software products and services. And now I'll hand off to Katrina. My name is Katrina Destre, and I'm the Director of Privacy with Kuma, a boutique consulting firm offering a wide range of privacy and security services. I'm based in California, and my focus is on operationalizing privacy programs. So what that means is I work directly with product owners when launching new products or services into the marketplace. I also work in the area of data subject access requests and partner-related inquiries. Prior to Kuma, I held management positions mostly in Europe, in the area of ICT and financial services. So I lived about 20 years in Europe, mostly in Brussels, also in Amsterdam, Paris, and Warsaw. So I have a really unique experience of seeing privacy come alive in Brussels, very policy-based, to then seeing a very hands-on experience in Silicon Valley in California. And I look forward to presenting examples of privacy by design here today. Here's a snapshot so we can see a little bit more about Kuma's offering. So we have a wide range of services, including privacy impact assessments and overall privacy assessments, as well as incident management response plans and trainings and awareness. We have a great split between the private sector firms and public sector organizations. And to find out more, you can see our website on the bottom right-hand corner in green. So I'll be covering five key points today on how to operationalize privacy by design. The five points are it's principle-based and the implementation will actually really reflect an organization's priorities. It's the best practices that will be revealed. That's in policies and procedures. This also includes stakeholder alignment, privacy impact assessments, role-based access, and finally, but very important, it's people and tools that are really needed to create a sustainable privacy by design. And I use the word sustainable because it's meant to illustrate for the long term. So privacy by design is something that's ongoing and to be a sustainable way of operating, we really need that combination of people plus tools. I have two images to illustrate privacy by design. The first one is a circle to illustrate this continuous nature of it. We see at the bottom, there's the dark gray. We start with the physical design and the network infrastructure, and it continues on with the choices made for information technology and to become ultimately an accountable business in your practices. Then we've got the smaller green circles and those are the wheels of privacy by design. Those are the principles, which we'll focus in on the words. The next slide. So these are the seven foundational principles of privacy by design. And the key words are highlighted. And these key words will come to life in the examples that will follow. So just to focus in on them, we see proactive, preventative, default setting, embedded, positive sum, full life cycle, transparency, and of course, at the very end, to keep it user-centric. So we know that we're, we're directing our work in an area that's software-enhanced systems, and that is to create efficiencies. And why is this? Well, we need to have this kind of automation so that we reduce the, the opportunity and the frequency for human error. At the same time, we're creating more access points to more information. 
And along the, the way, we're creating a lot of records, a lot of records that we need, but a lot of residual records as well. Now, in practice, organizations determine how to implement these principles of privacy by design. I chose this image because it looks like you're creating something from the very beginning. I mean, you think of the word by design and it sounds custom made, like it's for you. And in fact, that's the theme, that's the feeling that we wanna have is that we're creating something. So we have that opportunity to embed privacy as a mindset from the very beginning. Along the way, we're building strategic assets, all of this information, all of this digital information and digital records, they really are assets for your organization. At the same time, we have stakeholders that have expectations about how these assets will be, again, sustainably managed. So stakeholders are internal, your employees, as well as external, that's the regulators, that's the, the investors, it's your customers, it's your vendors, and even the media. These are all examples of your stakeholders and what they're expecting and how you're going to be managing privacy related information, especially personal and sensitive personal data. Also, it's very important to consider trust in your product and service, all the time and the resources that have been built up in establishing a level of trust in these products and services. So the privacy practices really matter to keep that attention on a very important area, not to have it evaporate very quickly if privacy is not considered. Alignment from internal stakeholders is very important. It's not just the external misuse of data. It can also be the internal misuse of data. And all of these stakeholders are, are counting on each other. That's why I've chosen this image. And they're also very much in alignment to have a sense of synergy. They pull together, they have that mindset. So you can also think about different programs, your training and your awareness so that you have internal champions. They recognize when data should be masked or it should be somehow protected and something doesn't quite feel right. That's because you have a great sense of internal alignment, which is definitely a wonderful goal to have on a continuous basis. How do we operationalize? put into practice this privacy by design. We embed it from the very beginning. Remember the design image that I showed. And especially when launching new products or services or changes to existing products and services that involve personal data regarding the impact to privacy. So if we're gonna be launching new product services, we're adding on functionality we think about is there personal data that's needed to have so those products or services can function as intended. And in that case, there's a process, privacy impact assessment. You start off with a threshold of questions about how that data could be used or changed or shared and determine if you need to go through the process. But it's all within the same family of this privacy impact assessment. Privacy impact assessments are conducted in various scenarios. It's not just products or services. It can also be bringing on a new vendor. It can also bring when you're thinking about new software, how it's going to impact your records management process. So all of these scenarios to think about in assessing the impact your, of your organization of privacy related data on your organization. Performing a privacy impact assessment, let's look at the image on the right hand side and actually doing a PIA. So we, we look at, are we collecting, processing, processing is widely defined, personal data. So it's important to share that definition of personal data, data that relates back to a natural person with your product owners and other, er and, and other members in, of your organization as well. So we can have that internal alignment as I've shown with that photo of the gymnastics. Once we recognize that there is personal data involved, and we think about how we can properly protect it according to its classification, you know, how sensitive it is, how confidential or restricted would it cause harm if it were to be used improperly. And then we think about how we're going to manage it, how it's going to be stored and at its end of life deleted. On the left, I've given bullet points to think about this. Yes, this is an example of a best practice. 
that will reflect those principles of privacy by design. This practice is designed to assess and analyze the privacy impact. It's an opportunity for the people that are performing the privacy impact assessments to provide guidance on controls to protect the personal data. It's also a way to sustain daily operations in a privacy responsible way. So it's not a one-off, it's a continuous circular nature. That first image that I show with the privacy by design and circle, it's ongoing. Tools exist and they're great. I use them every day to automate as much as, as possible that makes sense for your particular organization. But human oversight is definitely recommended. We think about privacy by design and we think about controls. And the first image that comes to my mind is that seatbelt in a car. You wouldn't get into a car and just drive along the road. You put on the seatbelt and you think, okay, I'm, I'm driving along in a very safe way. I'm protected a little bit. And this is a way of thinking about how your best practices can really reflect your commitment. You know, you're really looking out about how to protect your personal data, you're mitigating the risk, and you're leveraging, leveraging it throughout the organization. One of the best questions that I use often is, will the data owner be surprised at how their personal data is being used? So I researched the best photos for a surprise and a lot came up and this person looks very surprised. So if you're using personal data in certain ways and you're thinking, does that resonate with what we've told or we've informed the data subject? Does that feel quite right? You know, we've collected the data in this way. We want to, to use it this way. Ask yourself if this image would come to mind. Would your data subject be surprised? at the way the data is being used. And if that's the case, it's probably in the wrong direction. But what do I mean by surprised? These questions apply. How is it being used? Which entity is processing it? For how long is the personal data being processed? And why is it being processed? Is it being processed in a different way? Processed, again, is widely defined. It's collected, shared, viewed, stored, and deleted. That's all processing. Data tagging to govern and managing by role-based access is also very important. In the very beginning, I mentioned that we have new access points to a lot of records because of the automation and that we are creating strategic assets. So we wanna have responsible use along the way, mitigate these risks. And that's why I've chosen this image about the crosswalk. There's a lot of activity. You're trying to mitigate the risk of going across the street in, in a safe way. Operationalizing privacy by design is about people responding and demonstrating privacy by design principles and the impact on the business. So I chose this image because first of all, I, I know the artist for quite some time, not personally, but I know of his work. And this artist is known for creating his work to demonstrate human beings interaction with technology. And he, the artist, came into prominence in the 60s and has been highlighted in major museums around the world for the past 30 years. This image has been recreated in sculpture form, in, in paintings, etc. It's a way of thinking of human beings interacting in this technological driven world and increasingly software automated world. So it came to my mind because I think it's very important that we can't just say, well, we have tools that will handle this. Tools are great, like I said, but it's that mindset of thinking that principles really apply. We're trying to create a, a way of going forward in a sustainable way at the same time, with complying with regulations and standards as they apply to our particular organization and company and standards around the world. So to keep in mind that it's the people plus tools that make the difference in truly operationalizing privacy by design, which is principle-based, that will demonstrate the best practices for your organization. The key points that I've shared today is principle-based, best practices, privacy impact assessments are a great way to assess the privacy impact on your business, role-based access, the vast amounts of information is cr really critical to make sure that you have proper 
internal use of your data. And people plus tools are what create a sustainable privacy by design experience.